Wabash Valley, a Wabash Valley Lean Network and the Uplands Lean Network. We're broadcasting from the mill in uh, Bloomington, Indiana. Beautiful day here today. If you don't know about Wabash Valley Lean Network, it's, a, it's 125 member companies and organizations, uh, mostly throughout Indiana, but also some in the surrounding states. And we're focused on process improvement using lean principles and tools. It's uh, to sum it up, it's really about learn, share, meet and improve. We meet regularly in Lafayette, Indianapolis, Bloomington, and Valparaiso. When, we're, uh, when we've got a little more time, I always show a slide with Dr. Deming on here, and one of my favorite quotes from him, if you can't describe what you're doing as a process, you don't know what you're doing. And it's not, you probably don't know what you're doing, it's you don't know what you're doing. Because really everything we do is a process. It may not be a good process. It may not be a repeatable process. It may not be a process we want to show to anybody else, but it is a process. And one of the things we can do to um, make ourselves better is, is recognize those processes, try to get them down uh, as best practices, get everybody doing it the same way, and then improve those processes. So that that is one of my favorite quotes, and I think it's really the key to what we're what we're trying to do here. Our agenda today, it, it's 5S and, and focused around how do we sustain gains in today's challenging, crazy world. And we've got Dr. Carl M. Briggs from IU's Kelly School of Business joining us today. And uh, he's gonna share his insight and knowledge on 5S and maybe more importantly, how we sustain and, and continue to make gains in, in the crazy situation we find ourselves in. We're also going to have some breakout sessions. We'll talk a little bit more about those, but we'll have a we'll have a one that session which is sort of question and answers with with Dr. Briggs, a continuation of his talk. We'll have a, another group that if you're just getting started with the 5S, that you can you can talk about that. A second group, or third, it's be the third group that's sort of inter intermediate, talking about 5S and sustaining gains, and then. If you've been around the block a few times and uh, want to talk about 5S and, and sustaining gains and, and what you're doing there, that'd be the, the fourth session. So we'll, we'll make that real clear and easy for you to get into the, the different groups here when that time comes after the presentation. We'll do a quick survey and closing, and then uh, we'll call it a day. Our goal is to be finished up before 1230. So what's the definition of a successful meeting? Well, just like your projects, we, we have a couple goals. One, did you learn something today that will help you, that you'll be able to use to help you or your organization improve? So did you get something useful out of today that you can actually use? And this is more when we were having uh, live meetings, but did you talk with somebody today who helped you or will be able to help you or your organization improve? So it's all about actual improvement actionable items. That, that's the definition of a successful meeting for us. So just, just a real short blurb, um, continue, consider joining Wabash Valley Lean Network. We have monthly meetings, Lafayette, Indiana, Valpo and Bloomington. Presentations are informative and actionable. We also have two hours of free on-site consulting, training, assessment, evaluation, anything you wanna use those two hours for. Purdue MEP and McCarthy Continuous Improvement are two groups participating in this program. So if you've looked at consulting fees lately, you can, you can pay for your membership just by taking advantage of, of their two hours of, of free help on site um, at your organization. Most importantly, um, most importantly, you get a chance to meet, engage and network with other leaders and highly motivated individuals who drive an improvement in their organization. You can find a lot of this stuff on YouTube. You, you can read books, but where do you get 80 to 100 people who are fighting the same battles that you are um, every day and, and get them in the same room and be able to learn from them? That's what, that's what differentiates us. The, the cost is $500 for an organization, 250 for an individual, crazy cheap for what you get. And with that, we're gonna to talk today about 5S, sustaining gains during these challenging times. Um, 
lucky to have Dr. Carl M. Briggs from IU and the Kelly School of Business with us. Dr. Briggs is a key part of, of IU's um, Kelly School of Business. He's well published, in demand as a consultant and speaker. And with that, I'm going to get my butt off the virtual stage and hand the microphone over to Dr. Briggs. Hey, thank you, Doug. Uh, and, and thank you for the, the Upland folks for, for having me here today. Uh, but most importantly, thank you all for, uh, for, for, for spending your time to, to be here to talk about uh, the, the sexy topic of 5S. And so I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to be with you. Now, I'm going to have sort of a working title here. Uh, I think most of you are probably familiar, at least a little bit familiar. Of course, some of you are experts, and uh, but but at least all of us are, are a bit familiar with what 5S is. Uh, but but I want to pose a question, and, I, and the question goes something like this: Is 5S just a housekeeping exercise, uh, or is it what I'm going to call a key block discipline? And I'm going to call it a key block discipline because that's a very specific term. Uh, from the quarrying of limestone. And I thought since uh, Upland has named itself after a limestone formation, that that would be a good place uh, to, uh, to, 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 uh, to start, to, to frame what we're doing. Uh, so my outline for the session is, is a welcome and a little bit of an introduction. Uh, I want to give you what, what is my goal. Now, uh, honestly, Doug, I, I can't really improve over the goal you identified. I would call those, those things conditions of satisfaction, that you talk to someone, that you, you found something useful, uh, uh, but, but quite honestly, there's no value created until there is application. So that's, that, that's the big goal. But I, I want to talk about the goal in a slightly different fashion. And then there's three things about 5S that I want to talk about. I, I was told that there might be folks here who, who don't know a lot about 5S. So, so we'll talk about some of the basics. Uh, and then we're going to do a little bit of a deeper dive. I want to go below that uh, surface and, and sort of uh, go uh, sort of uh, pick apart or dissect, if we will, 5S just a little bit. And then I want to talk about uh, the challenge. Where are we today? Uh, what, what are the real challenges uh, with 5S? And then that hopefully will lead us into our uh, 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 breakout session. Now, um, in some cases, we you, you, you get to do a webinar where you just have a talking head. Uh, I, I want us to, to be a little more engaged than that. Uh, so you might, might hear me uh, cold call folks. So Mary Birdie, how are you? Mary, are I'm you? I'm good. Great, you yeah, get the I'm first- Yeah, I'm good. You, you, you get the first cold call of the day. By the way, congratulations on your recent black belt. Hoorah. Thank you. Mary, the most important thing about 5S. Not an important thing, Mary, but the most important thing. And there's no pressure. There's only a room full of lean experts listening. Sustaining it. Sustaining. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to talk about that as the badass. Not badass, Mary, but the badass. Uh, because that's the hard one. That's the real hard one. Uh, thank, thank you, Mary. So, so, so we've already broken the cold call piece here, so, so we're all good. So welcome and greetings from Indiana University, the Kelly School of Business. Uh, uh, this is my day job. Uh, uh, it has uh, given me the opportunity to do a lot of really cool things with a lot of really cool students, uh, a lot of really cool clients, uh, and uh, the ability to do that stuff all over the world. Now, it's always dangerous showing a card like this, a slide like this, because it, it could come across as the, the, the arrogant card. And, and I want you to know that that's not my intention. Uh, the reason I share this with you is that uh, 29 years of work buys us something. Uh, and here's what I think it buys us. It buys us the, 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 the fact that the uh, person who is talking right now understands that the most important thing that goes on in the next hour is not my slide deck or my script. The most important thing that, not I've got a slide deck and script, don't worry. I uh, saw a little bit of panic in Katie's eyes. Uh, don't worry, uh, I've got that. But the most important thing is that uh, you engage the content, that you find something useful, and that you're able to apply it. Now, that's going to be a bit of a challenge because um, Kathy, you got a lot of opportunity for, for 5S in your virtual world that you're living in these days? Well, you have to be creative. 
Okay. Well, see, I can't really tell because Kathy has her filter blurred. So maybe if you unblur your filter, we could see, you know, we could assess the uh, the work area you're in and see if we have a five. I'm teasing, Kathy. Oh, don't you, we do. Don't, no, no, no. We don't do. you do that. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. I, I told them uh, that my, that my, my uh, uh, best qualification uh, for talking to you today uh, on the matter of 5S or lean or continuous improvement is that I have a lot of opportunities for improvement. Uh, in in my uh, personal and professional life, so uh, that's that that that's the biggest deal. But but in reality, I I have had the privilege of learning uh, from from some of the uh, uh, really great people. Uh, Doug, uh, that's not your, the quote. Uh, the Dimming quote you gave is is not my favorite one. My favorite one is when Dimming said, you know. Uh, when something goes wrong, we blame people, uh, but we should blame process. And that's not an exact quote; it's a paraphrase. But I'm sure that's what it meant. What what he meant. Uh, so so I, I love that as well. So here's my goal for for today. Um, I, I want to provide uh, uh, some some enough content that there's something here for someone who is new. Maybe you're you're just wrapping your head around lean, or maybe you're coming to it from a from not a lot of of, of experience around it. Uh, someone who is 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 deeply engaged uh, currently. So we'll call this the the heavy practitioner. Uh, uh, not 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 heavy in that they've been to the smorgasbord too much, but but heavy in that. Uh, they're 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 doing it day to day, and and this stuff is is really important and. I also hope that there's something here for those those experts, those of you who have uh, uh, been a practitioner for for a long time, who have uh, uh, really done good work <clears throat> in lean and have learned a lot. Hopefully, there'll be something here for you. So that that is my goal uh, in what we're doing. So so why don't we start um, with the basics? Uh, probably the best working definition I've come across for what 5S is comes from the Gimba Academy. Uh, by the way, they've got a hilarious 5S video where the guy is, who's giving the talk is, is, is giving his talk in front of the most disorganized bookcase you've ever seen. Uh, and it drove everyone crazy until he, he sort of made the point after 10 minutes that that was intentional, uh, or at least that's what he said. <clears throat> a method of creating a clean and orderly workplace that exposes waste and makes abnormalities immediately visible. Um, Mr. Voss, tell me what you think about that definition. Are you tracking with it? Do you like it, Joe? Does it suffice? Does it, more importantly, Joe, does it move you? Yeah, I, one of the things I like about it is is that exposure to the waste because I think it's really a tool that helps us see waste, and then then it's up to us to go after that. I, I really yeah, like so that I, I, I like that. So 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 really, so 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 what I hear you saying, Joe, is it's not the housekeeping piece that moves you; it's the visible workplace. It's the. Uh, seeing waste all right i like that um what about the the abnormality piece yeah that goes along with the visual management system and making that visible so that uh -huh. when you go out on the shop floor you can see abnormalities happen right in front of your eyes and then that's really a big piece of exposing that waste and then going after it yeah. So, 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 so the, you, you keep saying that going after part, uh, Joe. So, so clearly we, th this definition doesn't quite get it done and go after it. I like that. <clears throat> when we think about 5S, well, everything has an origin story, doesn't it? So if we think about where 5S comes from, uh, our minds immediately uh, go to Tai Chi Ono. Uh, the engineer who probably did more to codify Toyota production system uh, and his uh, fantastic book, Toyota production system. Uh, and and it, does anyone know when this book was published? You know, ballpark. 
All right, Doug, go ahead. Ballpark, Doug. Oh, you're muted. That's okay. This is a this is Zoom, Zoom world. Okay. Well, it didn't actually get to the United States till later than than what you'd expect because he was doing that work much earlier. And, yeah, he, and I don't I don't think it got published until like the late 70s or 80s. Oh man, you are right on it, Doug. 1978, the height of disco, worst music ever, right? Now we 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 give Taichi Ono credit, and and we should. Taichi Ono did great great work, but um, I think there's a different origin story for Five uh, S. You see, there was this guy who came up with a system for 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 his workers. Now uh, let's see here, uh, Mr. Weaver. You know who this guy is. Um, hmm. Um, hmm, Dave, is, Dave, Dave, make it interesting, Dave. If it's wrong, make it interesting. Well, no, I'm, I'm working on it. I, is that, um, I think that's Jimmy Buffett's grandfather. Yes, yes, Jimmy Buffett's grandfather. You are right. So it was completely wrong, but it was interesting, Dave. I knew I could count on you. This is Henry Ford. Now, Henry Ford, he came up with a system and he called it can do. Didn't have to use the the uh, the same letter, so it wasn't alliteration, but it it made a statement. Yeah, we can do, and and here's what it stood for: cleaning, cleaning up, arranging, neatness, discipline, ongoing improvement. Now, take a picture of that or write that down because when we get to the five S piece, I I, I want you to think about. Was was five S? Where did it come from? Now, uh, Ford published this, put it out, put it out there in about 1926. So Taichi Ono was just a a small child at, at that point. Well, a teenager at that point. Um, so so I think we've got to be clear about, or at least have some insight into origin story. Uh, because sometimes folks get all caught up, all, all bent out of shape about the interpretation of the S and is the English word true to the Japanese meaning? And uh, that's kind of a silly exercise because what we're really doing at that point is we're taking an, uh, an idea like can do and we're translating it into Japanese and then we're translating it back into English in a different form and arguing about stuff. So, so uh, it's good to know origin stories. When we talk about 5S today, um, we, we, we begin in most places with, with the five Japanese words. The Siri, the Seitan, the Seisu, the Seikitsu, and the Chitsuke. Now, I was telling someone earlier that you got to be careful about that pronunciation on that last one in Indiana, or you can get into a little trouble. Uh, folks might think you're saying something you shouldn't be saying. But the English translation and and i'm putting a tilde there because it's it's sort of the translation it's approximately the translation uh is the first s is sorting uh this involves a significant categorization of physical items uh, into two categories is it uh necessary or is it not necessary uh the second one is systematize uh, which is, is really um, all about thinking about the physical placement of things as it pertains to process and the process work that you're doing. Say so is shining. And sometimes um, uh, we'll, we'll do a shorthand for this and call it cleaning. But, but really we have to, it, it's more than just that. It is shining, but it's not just cleaning for the sake of cleaning. It is shining for inspection. Now, um, we'll talk about that in a second. And then uh, Seiketsu is standardizing. That is, uh, when you have sorted, you have a systematized process, you, you are able to, to shine, to, to see abnormalities, then you can actually begin the the heavy list lifting of standardization 
Now that standardization is standardization of the, 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 the temporal physical space, but it's also standardization of, of, of uh, flow and process. And then the, the last piece is sustaining. Uh, chitsuke, uh, making sure that the not just the the physical space stays clean or those those organizational patterns are in place, but making sure that the process piece uh, is continued, it continues to be evaluated, uh, continues to be um, improved upon. So it really does include the idea of, of continuous uh, improvement. Now let's go back to the top. Uh, so, so actually, but before we break these down into individual pieces, um, I know that, that, that many of you are um, uh, deeply engaged with, with manufacturing. And I know that another group of you are deeply engaged in, in healthcare and life sciences. And I know that a significant portion of you are engaged in what I would call knowledge work. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the work that, that Mary is doing to, to advance continuous improvement at IU uh, in, in, in the finance and auxiliary services and the work that uh, Kathy, Kathy Sipes is doing in, in uh, keeping our, our uh, procurement and sourcing processes. Uh, uh, where they need to be and improving. Uh, those are examples uh, of knowledge work. Now, when we talk about 5S, we, we've always sort of focused on, on physical space. And there are some great uh, examples of manufacturing facilities that have been transformed through 5S. But when we get to 5S as it applies to business process or 5S as it applies to knowledge work, uh, that's been a bit of a challenge. In fact, there's been a lot of, I, I'll show you an example of some parody of, of that. Sometimes it's been taken to extremes or sometimes it's been, um, uh, it, it, has, it has missed, let, let's just say it has missed the mark. Uh, so, so I'd, I'd love to hear from those of you who are in those different uh, industries, so those, those different focuses, uh, what has 5S meant to you? So, 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 so let me hear from someone who is manufacturing. What, what has 5S meant to you? Jump in on it. Don't, don't make me cold call. For me, uh, 5S has been getting people to start seeing waste like really awesome. developing the eyes for, you know, yes. not stopping at 5S, but looking for improvements in, in other places as well. Like I, 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 I love that, Boris. That is, that is awesome. It's, it's more than just, just housekeeping. Wonderful. Uh, someone in life sciences, let's hear from you. No one's in life science? Uh-huh. Go ahead. Hey, Mr. Voss, I want you to call on somebody. I, I, I've already co-called and you find someone in this room that you know is in life science and uh, bring them to the table. Joe says, I can't believe you're doing this to me. Believe it, Joe, it's real. I'm not sure I know anybody in here in life science. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> then, 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 uh, okay, all right, all right. Fair, fair enough. That, that's a, a an OFI, an opportunity for improvement. You got to meet some folks in this breakout room, Joe. <laughs> Kathy, tell me about 5S in a knowledge worker's world. And, and Kathy, if you don't have a good answer, you can always say, Carl, that's a really good question. Uh, uh, Mary Burday and I were, Mary, Mary, Mary Burday yeah. and I were just talking about that. I think she has some insight. Well, so I would say um, from the knowledge experience, especially higher ed, uh -huh. uh, we, it's focusing on standardizing and not um, making the opportunity for exceptions to everything has been critical for us. I mean, everything is great, but standardizing and eliminating exceptions for everything has been really critical for us. So, so, so Mary, what, what I hear you saying is that the real value add hasn't been you putting blue painter tape around where you put your pencil on your desk. Rather, it's been making sure 
that this group or this, my God, that professor isn't trying to, to go around uh, the, the, the standard process you've identified. It is sustaining standard work. Correct. Awesome. I love that. I love yeah. that. We, Absolutely. We, we, and I would say putting as many processes in writing is part oh, of that, you know, by creating oh. um, written SOPs so that there's documentation to go behind uh, oh, you know what we we're saying oh, oh, and then there's oh, oh, oh. a lot of standardization so 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 creating a system creating standard standardization that is that is uh, an important uh value add in in your world is that right kathy that is fantastic um and I, I, and, and, just and, point to, uh, to carl there's a, a a comment in the text box too from mark Okay. He says he doesn't have any audio, but 5S has exposed equipment service and repair needs throughout their plant as well. So I think he's awesome, trying to Mark. I, I I I love it. So 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 not just not not just waste, uh, but 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 also being able to connect that to uh, uh, total total preventative maintenance. That's that's fantastic. I love that. Um, when we walk through these. Um, <clears throat> We can talk about uh, the, the, the idea and the practice. Uh, so, so the idea with sorting is that everything gets divided into two buckets, uh, the necessary and the not necessary. So every physical item gets divided into the necessary uh, and, and the not necessary. Uh, and a standard practice here is that you take the, uh, the things that you think are not necessary uh, and, and you uh, red tag them. Uh, you put them in a holding area for a set period of time, and if you haven't needed them or haven't used them in that set period of time, you get, get rid of them. This is the starting point because it is very difficult to establish flow. It is very difficult to see abnormality. It's very difficult to have a visual workplace if there's stuff that you really don't need. Um, now this reminds me of the Marie Kondo. I don't know if you know Marie Kondo, but she has this, uh, the, the, the art of tidiness thing, right? Well, she, she comes in and says, Hey, if this thing doesn't give you joy, get rid of it. Well, I don't know that we could use that at the workplace. We might end up getting rid of everything. Uh, hopefully not, but, but you might, uh, but this is, is this thing necessary? And if it's not necessary, get rid of it. Uh, the, the next idea is, uh, 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 by the way, challenges to this, when you put this to practice, what, what's hard about this? Ah, Emily, thank you for that. So Emily says, speaking from financial services, uh, to get, so, so to archive and get rid of, of the old, what, Emily? Knowledge. The old processes or what? Knowledge, processes, whatever it is. So yeah, th this one's good for me. <laughs> oh, I like that. I love that, Emily. So this is, this is, so, 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 so I'm, I'm going to give you quote, uh, credit for that. Emily says, not just stuff. We, we call it taking out the garbage, right? Uh, um, so, so one of, so one of the challenges that we have, so Marie Kondo, love that method just in real life, but translating that to work life. Uh -huh. So first of all, applying 5S in a financial services environment is a bit of a challenge. So a lot of what 5S means in our world is a lot of electronic file storage and electronic workflows and things like that. Um, yes. but my team specifically at the company that we work for, we help our, our stakeholders and our business partners document their processes. And what we find a lot of times is there's just been knowledge thrown into a oh, word man, doc or yeah. whatever and they're just so scared to get rid of that knowledge when it has nothing to do with the current process anymore so, so that's do i hear the challenge we run to do do i hear you saying that that this exercise can help cast out fear yes oh now now doug you know that was one of dimming's one of his 14 points right that's okay. awesome fantastic i love that um the next one, systematize. The idea here is that you, you, once you have cleared out the things that you don't need, that you are able to 
to systemize the things that you do have. Now, in the most physical sense, this means making sure that the your day-to-day -day workflow, the space you have is optimized uh, to, to uh, and the tools that you need access to is optimized uh, for, for the work that you're doing. Uh, sometimes this is uh, in, in uh, manufacturing facilities, systematize here is, is, is um, sort of a, a likened to, or the example that's given is uh, doing a, uh, uh, a shadow board but making sure that you've got a, a place for everything and everything in its place. But, but it's really more than just the shadow board. And Emily, I like your example because what the example points out is that systematize here can also, uh, not can, systematize here must include um, how does the workflow change? Uh, so that's systematize. Uh, in practice, Sometimes this piece of, of the 5P is, is not really un, well understood as, as giving people uh, invitation and, and, and uh, direction to uh, actually change process. But probably the, the 5S that, that is most um, <clears throat> misunderstood, in my opinion, is the idea of shining. Uh, and, and sometimes it's called shining, sometimes it's called cleaning, uh, but, but to, to, to the earlier points, it's not just shining for the sake of shining or polishing for the sake of polishing or cleaning even for the sake of cleaning. Uh, not that a clean workplace isn't important, uh, it's connected to safety, of course, but, but that's not what this point is, that, that's not what this S is saying. This S is saying it is shining for inspection. That is, you are keeping things clean so you can see abnormality, well, first, so you can see flow. Uh, but then secondly, so you can see abnormality. So, so, so the whole reason for the cleaning is to improve our vision, uh, our vision of how things flow and our vision of where uh, abnormality uh, exceptions uh, may, may live. Standardization is um, exactly, Kathy, what you were just talking about. It is about not just standardizing the physical space, that, that's important, uh, particularly in a manufacturing facility or process, but standardizing process. How do we do uh, a, an, uh, an RFP or how do we put in a request or how do we uh, make these changes to, to the, the, this, this input? Uh, so it, it's all about creating a, a process. And then the, uh, that's interesting, I'm missing a slide. The, the last one is sustain. Uh, now, Henry Ford called it continuous improvement, uh, but, uh, but, but sustain is uh, how we usually talk about it. Now, sustain doesn't mean that uh, um, we keep things clean. It doesn't only mean that we keep things clean. Sustain means that we are going through that process, continually evaluating whether uh, the items we need are necessary or not necessary, uh, continuing to uh, uh, make sure that uh, we're going, th that, that we're systematizing our work, making sure that we are are doing what is necessary to make waste or variation clear, uh, making sure that, that we are improving our process uh, as we do our work. So that is, is what sustain uh, really means. Uh, and of all five, it is that last one, sustain, that I think uh, gives, I, I don't want to give you the answer but, but I think that is the one where, where most organizations find the greatest challenge. Now, that's, that's, that's awesome, right? But I think the, the, the bigger issue here uh, is, is um, for us to take this, this relatively simple idea, 
five S's and really go below the surface. Now, if you've never um, read, um, uh, oh my goodness, uh, begin with why, Katie, who wrote that? That's, uh, oh, come Simon on. Simon Sinek. Thank you, Simon Sinek. Anna, you saved me. Um, uh, if you haven't read Simon Sinek's uh, book, Begin With Why, uh, then and you don't have time to read another book, go to YouTube and watch his 15-minute uh, TED Talk. It's one of the best TED Talks you'll see. Uh, Simon says, uh, there are lots of questions that companies can ask, but the most important one is why. Uh, he says that when you can ask, when you can answer the question of why, you can do things that are quite extraordinary, like the Wright brothers who beat the scientific uh, enterprise to really give us uh, uh, a man flight, or or uh, Steve Jobs who built a company uh, that was transformative, or even leaders who were able, like Martin Luther King Jr., who were able to to really. Uh, keep uh, a take a fragmented movement and turn it into something that 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 made a huge impact had a huge impact on the world. Um, so I think our most important question for uh, five why is is why do we do it? And, and quite frankly, if five why in your mind or in your world is just a housekeeping exercise. Um, I don't think there's a, there, there, there may be some motivation to do it, but, but I think that that's not, um, it's not enough. So I think we've got to go uh, deeper. On the surface, of course, we, we have the housekeeping. Now, it's, it's good to keep things in order. It's good to keep things <laughs> neat. There might even be a, a safety piece. By the way, sometimes we talk about 5S. Uh, but some people say, oh, we need 6S. They add safety. Then people say, no, we also need a 7S. So we need security, uh, uh, maybe even 8S satisfaction. I, I don't know. The S's could go on forever, right? Uh, but, but there's a good reason for, 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 for doing the housekeeping. But I have to tell you, uh, uh, Joe, if we didn't add that last piece of the definition, uh, it's just keeping things in order. That really doesn't move me. Uh, I, I'm not a naturally neat person by personal proclivity, and uh, it's just not. It doesn't move me. So you, you you've got to have you've got to have more. Well, when we reference the uh, the senseis, uh, the folks who've done this for a long time, they they say no, no, no. This is just the surface, but we've got to go below that surface. Uh, when we do 5S, we can see waste. Yeah, exactly. We can see variability or abnormalities. Well, that's really important, right? In fact, we can't have good workflow if we don't have that visibility. Um, then they'll go on to say, um, uh, you know, uh, it, it helps us with safety. It helps us with security. That's bigger than just housekeeping, for sure. Uh, then they'll say, hey, you know what? Uh, here's another benefit. It's cheap. You don't have to buy any equipment for this. Okay. I'm not even sure that makes a second level, but it's cheap. Um, those are all good. Um, but I think there's something below that as well. But those are all good, but there's got to be more, right? I think underneath that, uh, there is, if it is done well, and if people are engaged and involved in the process, you are helping to exercise the collaborative muscle. And anyone who has spent any time with process improvement or particularly lean, you understand that collaborative muscle is uh, one that, that, that you really have to exercise. Otherwise, um, what you have is just a, an impotent version of lean. And by the way, uh, the, the, the greatest harm you could do to your organization is to try and implement an, an impotent version. That's the best vaccine for real meaningful transformation that, that you could introduce into your organization. 
but there's more. I think there's something underneath that. But, but to really get to that last one, I think we have to go back to Taichi Ono. When Taichi Ono wrote his book, he um, used many metaphors, but this is probably the most significant metaphor, in my opinion. Others may not agree, but in my opinion, this is the most significant metaphor. He talked about the house of lean. Actually, he talked about the house of Toyota or the house of Toyota production system. And he talked about the things that I'm sure you'll have other seminars on, other workshops on. But then he had this thing in the center of the house, a very simple drawing, a very simple diagram. Does anyone know what that center of the house was? Anna? I'm guess. I'm oh, guess. Oh, oh, no, no, Joe, oh. Joe, let's hear it. Let's hear it, Joe. Is it a stick figure of a person? A stick figure of a person? <laughs> I like yeah. that. I like, so, so you something, something like that, Joe. Yeah. All right, I like that. But what would that what what would that mean in your opinion? People development. Gotcha. People Perfect. That is exactly right. He called it human development. So you want to know what the key here is? This bottom piece. Human development. You know why you do why why you do five S. You do it for human development. Now, I told you last, well, I, I was telling some, some, some folks earlier, I, I was teaching a class last night. I had a guest uh, that was, um, his name is, is uh, Doug uh, Oberhelman. Uh, Doug uh, is uh, retired now. He just, well, I say retired. He sits on 12 boards and helps companies. But he was the CEO at Caterpillar when Caterpillar went through their lean transformation. And, and so the, the context of the class was he was talking about operational excellence. He was talking about uh, leading a global organization through this, this period of significant um, uh, lean transformation. And um, I, I didn't tell him, hey, tomorrow, Doug, I'm going to talk about 5S. So why don't you give me some nuggets? Uh, he was completely unprompted. And uh, he spent about 15 minutes explaining to these folks who are being groomed for, you know, high level leadership positions in their organizations. Hey, if you do lean, 5S is important. Now, he didn't say it was important because it was cheap. He didn't say it was important because you can see visibility, you, you can see vis visibly see the flow. He didn't say this was important because you could identify variability. Uh, he didn't even say because you can flex your collaborative muscle. He said, when people work together and they see that they can have this cool impact on their workspace. They get really excited about it and they're able to um, engage in a way and grow in a way and learn in a way that they otherwise would not be able to do. Frankly, that is the gold standard. That is the deepest of the deepest dives, in my opinion, when it comes to 5S. It should be empowering. Uh, <clears throat> it should be uh, empowering, and it should um, uh, help us grow. Now, where's the challenge for us today? Um, I'm watching, uh, I think one challenge, okay, let's see if we can do this. We'll, we'll do a little bit of this video, because I, I think it'll make you smile. Uh, and, and Katie said I could have until 5, uh, 1151. So hold on, let's see if we can do this. So let me stop this here. And Okay. I'm all done over here. Now this is a parody of a 5S implementation. Yep, that's it. Just put a red tag on any item you don't use on a regular basis. And what are we gonna do with all this stuff once it's red tagged? We're gonna put it in a holding room for a while. And then? You know, you ask a lot of questions. Excuse me. I'm all done over here. Here you go. Uh, 
listen. Oh. Look, I know I technically use a stapler every day, but I have my own. See, so I don't need that one. Yeah, okay, look, really, you should be getting rid of most of this stuff. What do you mean? Like this whole horrible nightmare you've got going on. Are you talking about my kitties? Yes, this is the tenth circle of hell. I mean, just look at- You the put down the brushes or I will eat your So you put down the princess or I will eat your face. You heard it here first, folks. Uh, that is the first, I think, huge challenge of uh, 5S implementation, and that is um, uh, the people piece. I think there are some other challenges as well, particularly in, in a post-COVID world. Now, I think you probably uh, know, know the answer uh to to this um okay hold on but what what do you think is the hardest s in our post-covid world so kathy types sustain and why is that kathy Well, so I think sustaining anything is hard because, you know, people do have the immunity to change. And so, and it's just going to be, it's a different world and everyone's been willing to try new things right now, but it, will it be, will they be willing to try new things when we go back to normal? So I, I think that's right. So will they be willing? So, so, so there's the, the immunity to change, the, the resistance to change. Uh, is there another reason why sustain may be the, the, the greatest challenge in our post COVID world? Right now, it's hard to get people, and a lot of businesses are, are coming out of COVID booming. So you got this uh, customers they're demanding product, and it's a real, real struggle to get that get the product out. And so people are trying to shortcut. Oh, absolutely. So, so, so we don't have time to do that kind of, we don't have time for the house cleaning. We've got to get stuff done. This is where we're, we're behind. We got to, we, we got to keep moving. Is that it, Doug? Absolutely. Awesome. Very good. Well, this brings me to the biggest question I have for you. Is it housekeeping or is it a key block? Now, for those of you who may not know uh, a whole lot about uh, how limestone is quarried, Shame on you, first of all, because it's, it's, it's really interesting. Uh, but when you are cutting out a limestone mountain, the first piece is the most difficult. It's like cutting that first brownie out of the pan of brownies. You know what I'm saying? You know how hard it is to get that first brownie out without messing things up? Well, the same thing happens with a limestone, a wall of limestone. Getting that first block out is the hardest. But once you get that block out, everything else falls into place. When we think about 5S, I want you to, to, to ask yourself, is it just housekeeping or is it more than that? <laughs> because I think that it is, when it is considered correctly uh, and when it is applied in, in a correct way, that it is really more of a key block than it is um, just housekeeping. It's more about building that collaborative muscle than it is about simply making sure that your BIC pencil is right 12 inches to the right of your laptop uh, where you need it to write things with. So uh, anyway, that, that being said, um we're gonna so our next steps will be to open up the uh the floor for some discussion uh some breakout rooms for discussion and, and we'll, uh doug and his team will give us some guidance here in a second but but i want to thank you for your time thanks for letting me talk about 5s uh and i was facetiously said it was sexy but i have to tell you i do believe it's more key block than it is uh just housekeeping so that that's my name my contact information please reach out um if, if you're engaged in the business of uh, making things better, uh, please know that you're, 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 you're always invited to the Kelly School of Business. Katie Vitalato will give you a tour. 
uh, when I, actually technically I'm not sure we're allowed to, to do that yet, but as soon as we're allowed, Katie will give you a tour uh, and we would love to have you. So, so, so thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Briggs. Oh, you can call me Carl now, Doug. You've had to listen to my lecture. <laughs> so Andy, you want to take it over here about getting people in the, in the um, breakout rooms? Sure. Uh, so first of all, real quick, uh, also thank you, Carl. Uh, it was really uh, awesome. Like, I really enjoyed that. Learned a ton. Um, and speaking of learning things, I'm going to drop a link in the chat for everyone. Uh, that's a survey um, just about Carl's presentation. And then um, also, did you learn something today that will help you or your organi organization as you move forward? So if you could fill that out, I'll drop it in again later just in case uh, as well. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and open up breakout rooms so everybody has the option to um, self-select into whichever room they want. Um, so Carl will be in a room taking questions uh, as his own room called Carl Briggs. Uh, and then we've got a beginner, it's a very, uh, you know, creative name. Uh, and then we've got our beginner awesome. room uh, with, uh, with Chuck Russo, uh, our intermediate room with Katie, and then our expert room with Doug. And so um, those facilitators are all uh, pre-selected to go into those breakout rooms. Everyone else can pick which room they want. Um, I'm going to hang out here in the main room um, just to help folks get where they want to go. Um, and then we'll plan to be back here uh, about 1215 and to hear how all the discussion went. So I'm going to open those rooms now um, and we'll see everybody back here shortly. Me. Oh no, my, my my pleasure. Those were it's, those were great comments. Great insight. Yeah, it's always fun when uh, when those cut off right in the middle <laughs> of, uh, of 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 those sessions. I, I was doing a mentoring thing yesterday, and that happened more than once. And <laughs> it's always funny. You're right in the middle, of making a good point, and then everybody's gone. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, so Doug, I think do we want to hear from uh, we want to hear from the reporters in each room, right? Yes, and two minutes, guys or gal, guys and gals, uh, two minutes, or Andy's going to put the proverbial hook around your neck and pull you off the stage. Or he could just mute you. It's awesome. Zoom is awesome. <laughs> I, I, it's the one, it's the one thing that I have, I have all the control over. So it's kind of fun. Um, but so Carl, why don't we start with your room then? Um, all right. Do you uh, have your reporter report out and um, we'll, uh, we'll get put two minutes on the clock. All right. So they made me the reporter. Okay. So, so uh, uh, here, here's some takeaways. Uh, Joe identified a benefit that, that I missed in my talk. Uh, he said, when you do 5S well, it makes onboarding a whole lot easier. I thought that was awesome. Uh, Kathy talked about uh, um, how standardization uh, was what she felt that was probably their, the, the most important variable in her world. Uh, but, but, but SWORT was a close second. Um, uh, Mary uh, took Emily's idea from the from 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 the from the first session where Emily talked about how uh, 5s can be applied to processes and she says that in her world 
uh, they have standardized dashboards. So they actually use dashboards that connect to multiple information systems and think about 5S in that case. I thought that was awesome, fantastic. Hera commented that to do this well requires real meaningful leadership support. Uh, Joe gave an example of that uh, as well, but really meaningful leadership support. Um, several talked about the pushback that you get uh, and, and, and uh, Kathy identified Immunity to Change, which, by the way, is a book by Bob Keegan. Uh, it's a whole approach to change management that, that I really recommend for, for, for all of you. But Kathy identified it and said, hey, that would be something that would be really useful. Um, uh, and uh, there was another comment about the importance of, of uh, leadership involvement if you truly want to sustain. And then we had an example of a 5S blitz that, that sort of lost its momentum because it, it didn't really have that, that sort of leadership uh, engagement. So excellent conversation group. Did I miss anything? Dang, awesome. that was right on two minutes. That was, that was awesome. I, I, oh. I land the plane when it's supposed to be landed, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice job. All right, let's Thank go you. over to, uh, to Chuck uh, with the beginner room and uh, have a report out. All right, that'll be me. Thanks. Um, so there was a lot of good discussion in, in that group. There was uh, people who were um, fairly new to this process and some more seasoned um, professionals. The, the main conversation really centered around how to get this started and what are some initial barriers. And we had some good discussion around the need to really eliminate noise early on and focus on the activity, how to, how to, how to find the, the way to do that. Um, and, and another big uh, part of our conversation was around context. So you can say, let's just go do this activity, but really what's the shared context among the team members and the facilitators so that we kind of put the beginning uh, or put the end at the beginning, so to speak, so we know what our true north is. Um, we got into a little bit about the people side of change and how important uh, change management principles are, even with something um, like a 5S. Um, someone had mentioned that people are naturally territorial by nature of their space and the area that they're most comfortable in. I thought that was a great point. Um, let's see. Yeah, business case for change and, and making the what's in it for me case is, is important um, to get started. Um, and then, then another thing that uh, Chuck actually brought up was, was interesting for people that are new to, to 5S or even lean, start small, um, make sure the scope is pretty limited and then spread that learning. Don't, don't try to tackle too much. Don't try to reorganize an entire plant on your first 5S, for example, start with a workstation. Um, and then um, some other points on training others, um, getting them along the journey. Uh, the group mentioned there's some online training resources. Of course, anyone in this network, you know, could be, could be reached out to for questions on resources. Um, but, but generally with 5S, the concepts are pretty simple. So really just finding a succinct way to present them to a, a group that's new is, is probably the best way. Um, and take a lot of pictures before and after. <laughs> so my group can awesome. jump in if I missed any points, but there was some great conversation. Sounds like it, Shane, thank you very much. And, and Chuck too, for facilitating uh, that room. Um, so let's go to Katie then and your room and your report out. Hi, I'm Marty Blair uh, and I'm reporting out for Katie. Uh, we had a great group of, uh, of uh, members and most of our discussion was around sustainment. Um, seemed like most people uh, currently are using a 5S improvement. Um, the biggest thing with sustainment was the lack of staffing resources. It's a real challenge and especially when you have one person that's that's taking on this piece and um, so I know Larry had talked about helping develop others uh, similar to what Shane had just mentioned, training new people doing the same type of uh, uh, process. Uh, and Katie had mentioned the operational rhythm, keeping it going, uh, uh, you know, the daily rhythm and the expect, expectation of allotting a time frame for it to be completed, hold people accountable. Uh, Jean had mentioned that she was, uh, that the company that she is working with, there's multiple apps being utilized. Um, and so she had no systematic approach. She's working very diligently on uh, 
pushing out some new pieces. And Katie had mentioned she's referring back to the collaborative muscle. You know, take some wins and move on. Get the team members engaged and uh, uh, start pursuing. Did I miss anything, Katie? Thank you. Awesome. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Doug. And I think, Joe, you were in Doug's room. What do you yes, guys I got? was. Uh, as a matter of fact, that was all that was in Doug's room was Joe and Doug. Um, so no one kind of labeled themselves as an expert. So Doug asked me to speak on 5S from my experience. So I worked for Eli Lilly for 40 years, master black belt there for about 15 years. Um, I want to talk more real quickly about consulting in a 5S world. Um, so what I do is once I retired from Lilly, I... Uh, work with a, a group called Morsteam, and, and I actually go in and give simulations, lean simulations, um, to help a company understand. We give them a very bad process, and then through the day or two days, we work through, and we make that a better process by showing them lean tools, 5S being one of them, and all kinds of things as they go through. Well, COVID comes up, and now we can't do that room to room scenario. Everybody knows this. And we've got to turn all these simulations into uh, virtual. And I love, Carl, when you brought up the onboarding, because now as a consultant, I've got a problem. I have to onboard these people virtually. They're not in the same room that I'm in. And so the first thing I do, good master black belt is I 5S my area. Okay, I systematize it. I get it all ready. When I facilitate a simulation online, I typically have two, usually three computers going. I've got my, my aids in certain places where I know I can go right there and pick them up and I can go through, right? So we can systemize this, this simulation. The problem that I got into was when I tried to transfer and onboard the people that I'm teaching this to, the companies, maybe they didn't have the opportunity to have more than one computer. So how do we change that around? So that standardizing piece from a consultant standpoint in the virtual world, really kind of, you know, we had to work through and adapt that standardization for each company and their particular needs that they could do. And more importantly, what they could not do. Some couldn't use Teams, some couldn't use Zoom. And how do we standardize all of that to get this virtual playground going and all of that? So it's been a challenge, not one that you can't overcome, but one maybe we didn't anticipate as we moved in. Here. Joe, that is so uh, cool. I, I, I didn't know that you worked uh, with more steam. By the way, yes. for those of you who don't know, more steam is a, put some great content together. The zombie killer simulation, Joe, is excellent. I'm just saying. Inbox, yeah. Hey, give give uh, give Peg and Bill my best. I will. I talked to him this week. Awesome. Doug Chuck, did, did we just recruit our next presenter? Is that is that what I just saw happen? Right Sounds here like it Joe. to me. <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, we've had them present the zombie killer a, a few years back, but uh, maybe time to do it again. Anyway, Andy, are you are you done? We're good. Okay, so I'm going to just do close real quick, mostly by saying thank you for for the mill for hosting us. They're our home away from home here in Bloomington, and to Andy for um, for making this easy. He he pulls all the levers and and makes everything happen. Uh, virtually makes my job much, much easier as, as I can sort of sit back and be part of the part of the presentation. Andy's doing all the heavy lifting. So, and the Uplands Lean Network for, for hosting us and, and putting it all together. And last but not least, Dr. Briggs for a, for a fabulous presentation. Um, very enjoyable. And I, I think we've got all got some actionable items out of that, which is really the, really the key. So, with that, uh, lastly, consider joining the group. You're, you're not gonna find a better group of people to hang out with. Uh, watch for the September meeting, that'll be coming out, information on that. And with that, uh, adios, and we'll see you next time.